Hello everybody. Today I wanted to do a different video. Still on a Lincoln Town car, but what I am holding here today is the owner's manual packet. I'm going to try to keep it zoomed in. I am holding the phone on a stand for the first time and um, I wanted to cover everything that comes with the owner's manual, the booklet and everything else in the case that came with a Lincoln Town Car that I have. So I have, I think I have just about everything except for the window sticker. I have an 06 Signature Limited with the standard wheels and the optional sunroof. So it should be pretty easy to price out as far as what it was new. But, you know, this packet or this binder thing, uh, which is not in the best shape of its life, as you can see, it's got a lot of cracking right here. And let's see, the zoom, I'm going to have to keep refocusing it because I am trying to shoot it against the white wall. Um, and yeah, so the case itself, it's not uh, original to this car uh, that I have, but I did buy it separately on eBay and it, it, it does include all the booklets and stuff. And, and there's a very cool thing in there, which I will also be talking about. All right. So to start off with, you know, when I, when I got the car, it did come with two keys. So here is the one set. This is the one I'm not using. As you can see, I think this was from the previous driver. Uh, they probably used it a lot. So this button in particular, the lock button and the unlock button is a bit more chewed out than the normal. And the key itself is showing some wear. So this is my spare set. I did not get a valet key, but it does have like the stock number. You can see it's an 06 Lincoln. You can see the VIN. And that's about it. The key set that I am using is, I think I showed it on the counting the logos. So this one is in a bit better shape. Let's see if we can focus on it. There it is. This is the other remote. It's in a bit better shape. So I think what ends up happening is that people keep using their fingernail to hit the buttons. And then over time, they start ripping the rubber. So this is in a much better shape. And then the one thing that I did do is I added a remote start. I didn't do it at the dealership. I got it from Best Buy shortly after getting the car. It's a very simple, it's a one-way remote. You, uh, you, you can lock and unlock the car by holding the button down. So I'm, I can probably just show you here. You press it once, it does light up saying that it's locked. If you want to unlock it, you press it twice and that does unlock it. I don't know what the distance range is, probably 100, 200 feet, something like that. It has to be in direct vision of the car. There's a little sensor that was installed, I think, by the rear view mirror. And then to start it, uh, you press it once to keep it locked, and then you press it again uh, to and hold it for three seconds, and, and it's going to light up another one. Uh, I'm not going to do it now because there's a small chance it might actually start the car. Uh, maybe I'll show it to you outside when I do some other video. But that's what I have. I got it after the fact, maybe two weeks after. All right, so going back to this binder thing. So let's look Let's look at it. It did not survive very well over the years. As you can see, there's some wear and tear on it. Uh, the biggest problem is, I think, is right here. Let's try and focus on it. This is not real leather, for those of you who never seen this. This is some sort of a vinyl material that, as this thing keeps opening and closing like this, and then this material starts actually breaking down, which is what's happening now. All right, let's do a refocus. So, what comes in it? Oh, this, this thing is a magnetic locking thing, so... When it does lock, latch itself on. All right, I, I cannot seem to get it in there. But you're going to have to trust me when I say that. There you go. All right, you heard a little click. It does have a nice Lincoln logo on it. I think it's a standard uh, thing for every Lincoln of that vintage. And all right, so let's open it. So let's start taking stuff out of there. All right. So first and foremost... We got the owner's guide. It's an 06. So even though this is not original to my vehicle, it is an 06. So same year as mine. I am lucky enough to uh, have my factory code. 
So I actually do have two manuals for this. So one was one did come with the car and the owner, the previous owner, somebody was nice enough to write the factory door code in here, which I do have it written out. I have it very here handy on a sticky note. So I do know the code and I did reprogram it from the factory. All right, so the owner's manual by itself, let's see, how many pages is that? It has 328 pages. It was printed in the year of 06, where my car was born. And, you know, I don't really have a whole lot of interesting information here per se i mean you can kind of see it does obviously cover everything that any owner's manual would mine does come with an optional uh, sunroof so that's nice it does cover that it does have information there on the navigation system and the clock and all that i think i might do another video uh because there's some interesting things in there i did not read it cover to cover but I do know that it does have some interesting stuff on there on the operation of the radio, which I did actually find out from reading this manual. Um, and there's a few other things, like an interesting tidbits about how to operate uh, the headlights, which also this comes with automatic headlights. And there's a feature in there on these cars where you can have a delay in the automatic headlights which something I didn't know because the older models they actually have a position on the switch and then the newer ones didn't. So I thought it doesn't have it, but there's an interesting thing about this, this manual, you know, it does talk about, uh, let's refocus a little bit. Uh, talk about the switch here in the trunk for the air suspension. So mine uh, does have it. It wasn't converted yet. Thankfully, it still works. All right. So anyway, you know, it's a manual. I, I do refer to it. Like I said, this is my spare manual that came with this packet. I always wondered why they chose this graphic. What is up with the trees and the forest and this windy road and then this little digital whatever pattern this is i mean it has the lincoln it has the owner's guide 06 model town car it's interesting it doesn't have it doesn't say a lincoln town car it says model town car so yeah why not put a picture of a lincoln in here and if you don't want to use the modern lincoln uh, you can use the one of the classic lincolns but in any case it's this one is in good shape as far as the manuals go I do refer to it. It's got a barcode. All right. All right. So that's the, the main the main attraction here. The other thing that's in here is this. Uh, the maintenance guide. Once again, what is up with the trees? What is up with the clouds? Or this digital pattern? Don't know. Once again, oh, this is a, this one is interesting. It's a maintenance guide 2006 model year, which leads me to believe that... Oh, and this one was printed in March of 05. So that's an interesting thing. So this all came as a set from a different town car. I did buy it on eBay. It's interesting that March 06 here and March of 05. So March must have been their year to print stuff. And it's just different years. All right. So this one, I did refer to it. Uh, it does have a space for you to put your information. I didn't bother to do that. So this is interesting because, uh, you know, when I first bought this car, uh, let's see, are we in focus? Yeah, we're in focus. All right. When I first bought this car, I didn't know what the maintenance would be like, uh, what a kind of an oil change it needed or how even uh, like how often it does. So I did start looking in here and it does have like an example of an inspection sheet if you were to service it at a dealership. So what I did at first was here. Sorry, I know I'm going all over the place. There you go. So what I did at first was I started paying attention to page number 14, which is to find out how often to change the oil, which it does look like that on a Lincoln Town Car, or at least on a Ford of that vintage, it's every 5,000 miles, because this is the first entry as far as the normal schedule for service. And it does look like you gotta change the oil, inspect the tires, and multi-point inspection. And then the next, thing is at 10,000 and it goes up, you know, progressively, you have to do more and more stuff to your car, according to this, 
Looks like at 15,000, you know, replace cabin air filter if equipped. This, my car does not have that. You can see it right there. Um, so anyway, this is a totally blank service guide. So I was lucky enough to have this to find out that it's every 5,000 miles. Otherwise I could have Googled it. So my car now, um, I, I did change oil once since getting the car. Uh, it was, I think it was around 80, I think when I got it, it was 89,000 miles. It was, it was between this change, change oil, replace air filter. And, and when I got this car from a dealership, they did change the oil. So I did get it with a fresh uh, oil change. And then as I was replacing rear brake pads, I did have them change the oil. So the next oil change for me is not due until at technically 96,000 miles but here it says 95. So next time I do it, it says change engine oil, replace air filter, inspect tire wear. Uh, I was lucky enough to get it with pretty good tires that are still gonna last me for another probably 25,000 miles. Uh, inspect tire rotation, multi-point inspection. But then before that, look at this, look at, look at 90,000 miles. So I, I did change the oil and replace the filter. Inspect the tires, they're fine. Brake pads, actually had them change it in the rear. The front ones are good. Wheel ends, inspect engine cooling system. The air conditioner actually surprisingly still works. Inspect exhaust system and heat shield, blah, blah, blah. I replace engine air filter. I, I did get it with a pretty clean filter too. So replace fuel filter, replace cabin air filter if equipped. Transmission fluid, it just goes on and on and on and on and on and on. So, so, and the interesting thing about it is that if I go up, I'm just gonna keep going up. The most mileage that this thing covers under normal schedule for trucks and full-size vans and SUV. So normal schedule trucks, full-size van and SUV. SUV, it's 150,000 miles. So then this is normal car, sorry, normal cars and minivans. So, all right, so they do have a separate separate category here for cars and minivans, which is, by the way, something I just noticed. I didn't realize that at first. They have it here until oh okay so they have it here also until 150 thousand miles focus 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 there you go so a lot of stuff you got to do but the thing is you know these cars especially town cars and especially for like limos and stuff they would go way above 150 thousand miles so i would think that on the next page it would keep going but nope they have special operating conditions and they have listed all the stuff you got to do so if you're towing a trailer change oil every 3,000 miles every 30,000 change transmission and transaxle fluid and on and on and on and on so I guess when I read about the first thing I should have probably focused on cars and minivans yeah there you go okay so we can focus on this so 90,000 I still had to do all that if it's a car 95,000, which is exactly the same as it was on a truck. And then at 100,000, it's a little more stuff. So that's the maintenance guide. All right. So the next thing to talk about, the benefits of owning Lincoln. Doesn't say a town car. Once again, you got the clouds, you got the beach, you got the, this digital camouflage. Oh, here it does say the benefits of owning a Lincoln, and here it says the benefits of owning Lincoln. All right, so strange way how they decided. So let's look at the benefits of owning a Lincoln. The Lincoln commitment, the more than gratification of owning a Lincoln vehicle. The Lincoln commitment. Comprehensive owner benefits uh, design, provides service, support driving. I took delivery of a new Lincoln. You drove off with more than a final luxury vehicle. You also took with many benefits of Lincoln commitment. All right, we encourage you. Book will become familiar. Blah, blah, blah. If you have any questions, call this number. All right, I don't know if this number still works. And once again, you got this digital camo stuff. So what does it cover? Trans Let me focus again. Bam, focused. 
All right, transportation assistant, roadside assistance, new vehicle limited warranty, commitment, maintenance, custom resolution, the Lincoln owner card, port information, and their offices. So once again, you know, with the warranty, they can offer you an assistance, obviously. They can, what else could they do? Roadside assistance, which obviously when my car is already expired. They, oh, they can deliver you up to two gallons of gas or five gallons of diesel fuel if you run out of gas. They can do a winch out, then you can do towing. Oh, look at it, look. It says towing Ford Mercury Lincoln eligible vehicle. So this is still at a time when there was a Mercury brand. All right, so they could tow you. They could do what? Items not cover, parts, gas in addition to the service call delivery, parts involved in a lockout service, which is what, a Slim Jim? Or, I don't know. All right, any form of impound or towing. Oh, yeah, well, that's true. All right, you can claim it within 20 days. You can go there. You can call them here. All right, what else we got? New limited warranty, four years, 50000 or five years on a corrosion. All right, well, everything has passed on my end for this. Here we go. Now we got rocks. Like, they chose the weirdest stuff. Like, why, why not? Why not put classic Lincolns? Why not put a car? Any car. Anyway. All right. Complimentary maintenance. Apparently, you did get the first 12,000 miles covered uh, of any kind of maintenance. All right. That's good. The 2,000-mile window. Maintenance should be performed anytime within 1,000 mile universe. All right. So, it only applies to the original owner. Whoa. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Look at that. I just lost the page. The page just literally fell out. Oh, because it's the middle, and I think the staple probably didn't catch it. Okay, well, that's fine. I don't need this. This is more for the records, for my records. All right, there's more than 1,350 Lincoln dealerships. That probably has changed by now. Uh, Lincoln Customer Resolution Center. Once again, you have a tree that doesn't do anything. You have, again, the beach. You have Lincoln Owner Card. I did not get a Lincoln Owner Card. Is your key to receiving many benefits outlined in this booklet? This card located in the back of the booklet contains information, phone number. Oh, so maybe it's in here. All right, how do you, what, how do you call them? Apparently, there are claims for their warranties in Texas, Dallas. All right, once again, you got weird clouds. Port information, auto club membership under the agreement. You got the, the warranty stuff. Yeah. Oh, there's the card. What did, what else we got here? Fill required with certain states indicate. Oh, they're like their their customer service offices or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. Too much to read. And then you got this roadside assistance. Oh, so here you go. Even though once again this is not an original to my car, but this is the owner's card for the 24-hour roadside assistance that came with the two in perforation. And then, oh, all right, so there you go. That's the card. So I, I need to fill this out, and then, yeah, I can call their 1-800 number, which at this point, they're not going to care because the car is like 14 years old. All right, so that's the benefits of owning. We covered that. This is an interesting thing, which probably came with all the Fords of the time. Safety advice, how to buckle up, how to keep the kids safe. Let me focus again. All right, don't put your kids up front, don't hold your kid, don't lock them in the trunk. If you do, teach them how to pull this. And then here we got the passenger bag. Got the how to disable an airbag, which I don't think my car actually came with this. Maybe some other cars did. Uh, how to safe operation to handle it. I like the, the cell phone. It's like an old Nokia that was here. So this is an 06, so, you know, cell phones were, were already, uh, they stopped installing, I think, cell phones in Lincoln Town Cars by then. Uh, but yeah, they want you to be careful and only take and receive calls when it's safe. Switch off the engine when refueling. So this is a Ford thing. So I did get this. All right. Copyright 2005 Ford Motor Company, Ford.com. I like how here they didn't bother making a Lincoln version of this. 
Here is just a Ford safety advice, not a Lincoln safety advice. All right, wrapping up. Quick reference guide. So this is an interesting one. So this, this thing, once again, got a weird forest, got the same thing. So this is a model town car. Here they have model town car quick reference guide. Here they have the Lincoln. They don't, they don't have, oh, they have a town car here. All right. They chose very strange wording. Here, hope you fully appreciate a countless feature of your new vehicle and what you to explore. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. All right. Oh, all right. Which brings me to the next point. So we will, we will go over this, this video, and then I will make a separate video about this CD. I don't, whoops, upside down. All right. Well, it's the same CD, but now you can see it. Once again, you got the Winding Road Interactive Owner Experience Model Town Car, the original CD. So I will make another video. I do have the CD. I played with it for a little bit, but I don't know how I'm going to film it because I don't have a CD-ROM on my computer. I'll have to find where I could stick this thing into and film it somehow. Uh, anyway, yeah, but that's, that's another video. So let's wrap it up with this interactive guide. So this is kind of a fold-out thing. So, yeah, it's a good thing that I saw that. Works with CD included. CD. CD, look. CD included included CD. Hmm. Well, I guess no no further questions. It does include a CD. So this is where you can kind of see the headlamp controls, the daytime running lights, fog lamps if equipped. Oh man, I really wish my car came with fog lights. Because uh, otherwise, I, I guess this thing could have been pressed. Uh, but yeah, my car does not. You know, dimmer switch, ABS, how to shift, what kind of check engine light. Hmm. The rear defrost, front defrost, steering wheel controls, the pedal adjustments, the turn signals, traction control, blah, blah, blah. I like, I like this little, uh, you know, super graphic where they made the steering wheel see-through. Uh, panel dimmer. Here, let me unfold this thing. There you go. Here, this is in its full, in its full glory. You can, so it talks about all the little controls. All the little lights, everything. I like how they identified this is a clock. And this is the gear shift overdrive control. All right, well, interesting. Hmm. It's interesting they didn't identify the cup, that these are the cup holders. They identified the auxiliary power port, but hmm. all right, that's the remote, lock and unlock, memory function, if equipped. Sorry, I know it's not the most focused. There you go. How it can correspond with the key. How you can adjust the lumbar. I wonder how many people even know that there's a lumbar support, especially if they are not like aficionados of these vehicles. That there's a, like a little hidden lumbar support. And I always wonder why do they stick it on the front of like the cushion of the seat, not anywhere else or like on the door. I got the, the famous keyless entry system, got the heated seats if equipped. And then on the back, got, you know, all the radio stuff. This SEL text, you know, this was one of the things that I did read in the manual because I did not know that um, you can actually have uh, like the station display. So there's... There's a certain feature you can turn on and off um, in the in the CD player or in the radio. So anyway, uh, yeah. So then they got the climate control stuff, wheel control, the remote trunk release, which is unlabeled in the actual car. All the different stuff that has here essential information fuel tank capacity is 19 gallons tire pressure that's on the door fuse is changing the tire item and location roadside emergency the phone numbers and then we're going back all right okay so this video ended up being a bit longer than i thought i thought i was just quickly gonna show you all this goodness 
but you know i am maybe there's gonna be some aficionados that love this stuff like i do uh all right well stay tuned for another video for the cd this is gonna be interesting all right thank you everybody